Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hoag here and a special challenge video that will see one person from the community win $1,000 with their top stocks. I asked five longtime citizens of the Bowtie Nation how to invest $1,000 to get their highest return for the rest of 2022. What they didn't know is that I'm investing that $1,000 in their top stocks to buy $5,000 total in five portfolios and at the end of the year, the person with the highest return keeps the money. In this video, I'll ask each how they would invest $1,000 and their top five stocks to buy for the rest of 2022. Watch through, see which stocks they picked, and then let me know in the comments your top five stocks you'd buy and the portfolio you think will win it all. You know, we can't get started though without that special shout out to all you out there in the Bowtie Nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of the community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. First up is Amy, a longtime member of the nation and one of the most frequent commenters in our Facebook group. Amy started investing over 20 years ago, but never really thought about it. Their investments saved them when the family lost their income a few years ago, and she's just started buying individual stocks in the last two years after watching the channel. Amy, thanks for joining us uh, here. Uh, great to have you. Really wanted to get your perspective on the rest of the market as you know, as a longtime citizen of the Bowtie Nation and uh, see where you think the markets are going for the rest of, of 2022. You know what? I think for the rest of 2022, 2022 I hope they somewhat stay the same um, because they've already dropped so much. And I feel like the catalyst we've already had, had have been so dramatic you kind of think what could possibly get worse at the same sure. time there's a lot of negative sentiment so hey they could drop some more but i'm i'm kind of okay with them staying down here for a while because i don't hold enough cash on the side so the okay. longer they stay here the more i can get in so build in a little <laughs> bit of cash okay so yeah. uh, so you know uh what i'm asking everybody is kind of just hypo hypothetically if you had a thousand dollars to invest uh, we're really trying to get the the highest return over the next six months for the rest of the year uh what are the five stocks you would pick so so the first stock what what's that Okay, first one, uh, I went when I was thinking, what do I really think is going to make money? I went back to what I put in the that competition last January on okay. Stock Card, and they did terrible, and they, <laughs> but I still like them. So one of them was TCNNF. It's True Leaf Cannabis, okay. and they um, have just expanded. They're pretty dramatically in Florida. They have acquired Harvest, and they are rebranding all of those stores. Their CEO is a attorney with regulation and so she's pushing open doors for all this stuff to happen and i just think they're growing incredibly fast once that once everything's legalized they won't have to pay so much in strange fees they'll pay more taxes instead and i sure. think they'll do really well so what's your uh, how about stock number two Stock number two, um, Seneca Foods. Um, okay. I'm a big fan of foods because I think we're, we've are we got all these shortages. Seneca ba basically takes all the food from the farms and makes it into the stuff we actually eat. Uh, canned goods, frozen goods, maraschino cherries, pumpkin, like just all the stuff that you wouldn't, we don't eat our pumpkins, we carve them and throw them away. We eat them when they come in cans. And they produce this stuff for school lunches, for other government programs. Um, they distribute them in 90 different countries. I can't name 90 countries. <laughs> um, <laughs> they send them to supermarkets, outlets, and dollar stores. Okay. So I figure as long as people need food, they're doing well. So probably a while. Uh, so yeah, so interesting. <laughs> I, and I like how you kind of balancing that. Uh, so a little bit more, a little bit riskier play there with the, uh, with the cannabis company and then, you know, safety play, play here with the food, uh, the food processor. Uh, stock number three. Stock number three, I had a hard time with, but um, I really like, well, one I know a lot about, I guess, because I heard about it ages ago is DraftKings. Okay. And they really focused, I actually heard about them, but I think before they went public, they were really focused on the gaming space or the sports betting mm -hmm. space. So they went to the um, researchers and said, we need you to prove this isn't gambling so that we can do it. Okay. <laughs> and the researchers said, sure, we'll do that. But no matter what we find, whether we agree with you or not, that it's not gambling, we publish. They said, okay, ah. they did it. They found you can get a strategic advantage through intellect and whatever. It's not fully gambling. So they're using that to break open in more and more states. And I think the first time I ever saw their stock, it was like 50 bucks. And I was like, oh, yeah. mm, that's pretty short term money. There. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, the short term money, I think has gone away. So I really like drafting. Anyway. So uh, stock number four, I guess. Stock number four. So the last two are a little bit more similar. Um, 
Which one do I do first? Um, I invested in VMware once upon a time ago because I was looking at CrowdStrike and again, it costs so much. And I was, and like when those oil pipelines went down and you just really saw the need and crypto everything, you really see the need to prevent hacking. And so I was looking at the whole category and thinking it was really uh, tricky, but VMware, VMW, or I'm not sure if they're oh, VMware, VMware or VMware. Okay, uh, VMware. I'll go with yours. Actually, I think um, they're they're being acquired. Actually, yes, they yeah. are. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I've held them for a long time, and they sold off along with everything else. But of course, as soon as it was announced, they popped back up. They've dropped again because all the short-term money is going back out. Oh, right. Wow. Um, okay. When I checked into it the other day, um, Avgo is going to acquire them at 142.50 per share, uh -huh. and they're currently trading at 113. So wow. that's what 30 bucks a share just by putting it there. And hopefully that's within the six six months, so it'll boost me up a bit. That's <laughs> interesting. I, I love that play because it's it's really kind of a uh, an M and A arbitrage uh, kind of idea, right? Uh, you could say it's kind of the same thing with Twitter and, and Elon Musk to take over. Although you know that is very much uh, you know. A riskier riskier play because that might not be completed but but i think they're getting a great deal for vmware and i think that that one should definitely um uh, complete so I, I love the uh, i love the idea of that kind of arbitrage uh idea of of getting it at 113 now since it's sold off and uh really having that you know very very certain price of 140. excellent yeah so stock number five then and the last one is kind of along the same similar or similar theme um activision blizzard Okay. ATVI. Um, I realized I've been married for 21 years now, which means I've been playing video games for 21 <laughs> years now. And Blizzard has gotten quite a bit of my money. <laughs> I can't okay. lie about that. Between me and my husband and occasionally my kids have you know, looked into it a little. Um, it is kind of a community space. And once you're in that community space, you're kind of in that community space. Also, when I got my new gaming computer, you know, because mine were all dying, Microsoft now pops up this window that says, you know, play these games and I close it and I go to Blizzard. And every time I close it and I go to Blizzard, once those two combine, once Microsoft owns Blizzard, I don't shut their window anymore. They're uh -huh. gathering so many eyes. Wow. So there's, it's such a great value for them. I can't imagine Microsoft not going through. And that one's going to go from about $78 now. You're going to get 95 And I thought okay. it was 96.50, but when I looked it up the other day, okay. 95 Wow. So and, still, and another, another arbitrage play. <laughs> yeah, another arbitrage play. Really, really interesting. Really, really great to play. Because because basically you're going to win whether the market goes up or down. Because uh, those are two mm -hmm. stocks that, that I think, I mean, I think the acquirer is getting a very a good price and a very good strategic uh, buy on that. So there's no reason those shouldn't go through it, even on regulatory uh, uh, issues. So uh, so yeah, it's a, a, you know, a very solid portfolio. I, I like how you've got some growth there with the yes. cannabis, you've got some food distribution there, uh, and then those arbitrage plays. Now, you know, I, I, have to, I have to confess, it's not, this isn't necessarily just a kind of a theoretical, hey, what, what's your opinion kind of thing. I'm actually going to invest $1,000 in those five stocks on a portfolio in stock card. I'm going to do that for all five of the, the people I'm talking to. And at the end of the year, <laughs> the highest the highest return uh, portfolio, then they get to keep that money. So, uh, you know, could wow. be 1000 could be 1500 <laughs> uh, What would you do with another $1,000? I guess maybe buy, play more video games or... <laughs> <laughs> No, I'd put more in stocks. <laughs> that's that's what everybody is saying. Everybody's retire. saying reinvest, reinvest. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right, everyone. especially right now. I've been hit with some like home improvements that kind of that have to be done. They have to do with uh, sealing the whole place up, getting doors, windows, like saving money down the line. And so right now, I don't have a ton of cash to put in. And so okay, yeah, so I'd reinvest it. Put more All stuff. right. <laughs> All right. Sounds great. Well, uh, you know, knowing that it's it's a real portfolio that's going to, uh, you know, you're, you're competing on, on that return. I'll give you a chance to change one of your stocks if you want, or you can stick with all of them. I, I do think it's a it's a great portfolio, especially with those arbitrage plays. So, you know, if you want to change one of those. And I think I kind of <laughs> like it. Oh, I want to say Seneca is trading a little richer than usual right now, but no, I'd say keep them. It's keep all good. Them. All right. So we'll. <laughs> yeah. we'll I'll invest in those five, that $1,000, and uh, we'll probably check in in about three months to uh, see how the portfolio is going, give you a chance to maybe change some up if you want to then, and we'll see how it does after, at the end of the year. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Amy's got a really smart portfolio there with those two arbitrage plays, basically taking the market crash out of her stock picks. She's also got some strong growth stocks there if the market does recover. I'll be creating these portfolios on StockCard. Click through the link in the description below and go to Bowtie Nation $1,000 giveaway to follow the contest 
or follow the Bowtie Nation portfolio and get advance notice whenever I buy or sell from the list. I've used StockCard over the last two years for our Bowtie Nation portfolios and love the tools on the site. If you do sign up, don't forget to use the promo code Bowtie Nation. That's all one word and lowercase for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. Chad is up next, a gym owner in Albemarle, North Carolina that started investing just before the pandemic. Chad helps moderate our Facebook group and shares his options investing strategies. So Chad, thanks for joining us. Uh, great talking to you and, and getting your perspective on uh, you know the rest of the year. Uh, so where do you where do you see the markets going for the rest of uh, 2020, 2022? Almost said 2020. It's, uh, it feels like it's Honest, been so, so long ago. Honestly, I, don't, I have no clue. Just like everybody else, you know, I make speculations and try to predict what I think is coming and, and everything like that. I don't think the market's going to get as bad as what some people are predicting um i've noticed some stocks that are they're hanging in there you know they've mm -hmm. been pretty strong and and kind of uh, i would say i would say consolidated instead of really took a big hit and uh, one of those is actually one that i'm gonna bring up today that i've that i'm a real big fan of that is probably overlooked by a lot of people but the fundamentals all of everything's really good with it it's got a small dividend um and that's academy sports sure okay well so, let's let's start let's get right into it then uh if you had a thousand dollars i guess you know for a, a theoretical portfolio of a thousand dollars how would you invest it for the the most return uh for the rest of the year uh the, and your first stock is i, I guess uh, academy sports uh for the rest of the year mine are it's going to be uh google google Google's okay. probably my favorite stock right now um devon energy and mm -hmm. um, i like gladstone commercial and I like Gladstone Land also, along with okay. Academy Sports. So those would be my five picks. And it's all based on fundamentals. Uh, one reason I really like Google is, of course, I mean, they're a powerhouse. If I don't see, I don't see Google having any trouble surviving any type of recession, um, especially when their cloud service becomes profitable because it hasn't yet. Sure. And as soon as it starts turning profit, you know, your every all your P ratios, the price sales, all that stuff is gonna is just gonna look much more attractive than what it currently does. And right now it looks damn good to me. Yeah, so yeah, I think, I'm I, loving it. it when, yeah. when it hits twenty one hundred dollars, I'm thinking, man, that's a good deal. Yeah. And that's when I started really selling those puts on it. And you know, and it enabled me to buy more shares than what I was originally wanting to, to buy. Okay. Um, Academy, I've had Academy for a pretty good while. Actually, whenever you started talking about dicks. I, I chose Academy over Dix, and then they they started giving a little bit of incentive by a very small dividend that they offer. Mm -hmm. But they have weathered this sell off really, really well. If you go back and, and look in May, they they did drop down to around twenty five bucks, but they came right back up, and they're they're hovering around the same price point constantly. Mm -hmm. So I feel real confident that they're going to hang in there. I mean, if they sold off twenty percent more, I really wouldn't care. I mean, the whole market could go twenty percent more. I'm expecting it. But that's why I'm 40% cash. So mm -hmm. I can buy more. I can find some other deals. It really just depends. I mean, there's so many. I look at it now and it's, I'm excited about it and scared at the same time being new. And I'm just thinking, okay, you know, I'm not looking to take this money out in next year or the year after that or even in three years. And I do some swing trading every chance. Now, if I get a chance to make some money, I take it. You know, if there's a, sure. there's a large amount to make, then I, I think you have to take some profits, even if it's just a partial taking. Uh, well, you know, I, I love I love the five picks. I, I like that you have uh, some tech in there, some energy, uh, some real estate uh, and retail, things like that. Really kind of a, a, a broad, a broad diversification of, of stuff in your portfolio. And what I'm going to do, actually, this isn't just a, a, a trying to get your perspective. I'm actually going to invest a thousand dollars in those five stocks on a uh, on a portfolio in stock card. Um, I'm doing that across five portfolios, five different members of the Bowtie Nation there. And uh, the highest return over the over the rest of the year, uh, that person keeps their portfolio. They keep uh, they keep whatever that that return on their portfolio is. So uh, so it could be a thousand, could be twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, okay. whatever, uh, whatever that comes out to be. Yeah, that's good, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Wait, what would you do with uh, <laughs> what would you do with an extra thousand? Uh, go right back into the market. Go right back in. That's what everybody's yeah. saying right now. So yeah, just I mean, reinvesting, it's... putting it back in. You know that's the whole purpose. You know, if you're if you're in the market just to make some fast money and then get out, then there's really no. I don't see a purpose in doing it. You know, uh, my goal is to create some kind of generational wealth for my family and the future when I'm no longer here. I would like to leave a, a pretty decent legacy behind. I've done well so far in my life, but you know, a lot of it came with hard work. Mm -hmm. Just like just like the stock market, it's learning this stuff is hard, and people do not understand that when I say I get up in the morning doing stock stuff, I'm not buying and selling stock i'm learning I'm, I'm watching the videos i'm i'm reading i'm doing everything i can just to to 
gain more knowledge in in the business side of it just so i can make smarter trades and smarter investments excellent well sounds great well knowing that uh, knowing that this is actually going into a real portfolio and uh you know trying to to beat these other five four portfolios uh i'm gonna give you the chance to change any of those single stock picks if you want or we can stick with them and i will uh, i'll put them in the portfolio honestly you know i've had put a lot of thought into to what i was going to pick for the rest of the year and mentally i can't do it okay i can't I'm not looking for December to roll around and say, okay, I'm done. Um, th these are, these are investments that now Devin, yeah, I would, I might would cut it at some point, you know, in the, in the near future, but the other ones for me are long-term holds and, and just watch them grow. Great. Yeah, Love the yeah. long-term perspective. All right. Well, I'm going to check in in about three months with those and I'll see how they're doing. See if give you a chance to uh, kind of uh, change up or update any of those stock picks if you want, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks, Thanks Joseph. Nice talking to you, buddy. Yeah. I really like the diversification in this portfolio with real estate, energy, tech, and some retail stocks. It's got a strong dividend plays that would be great for a long-term portfolio. We've still got three more members of the Bowtie Nation and their stocks to highlight, but I want to get your input on this as well. What stocks are you watching for the rest of the year? Which would you invest in? So scroll down and let me know in the comments, which stocks would you pick and which of the portfolio of five here do you think is going to win? Next, Melanie is an elementary teacher investing since 2001. She started investing passively, but has started to be more active with individual stocks since 2020. So, hey, Melanie, how are you? How are you doing? Wonderful. It's great to talk to you. Yeah, it's great to connect. Uh, really appreciate your help on this. I wanted to reach out to some uh, some of the, the uh, actively engaged people in the community, in the Bowtie Nation there, and uh, really just kind of get your input for the rest of the year. Where do you see the markets going? Uh, what are you what are you looking at as far as stocks and and why? So, you know, uh, just hypothetically, if you had a thousand dollars to invest for the rest of the year in five stocks, what uh, what would you be looking for? So for the rest of the year, one thing I think we've learned with this market downtown, uh, downturn is that it's really important to have some money set aside. So if I had money to invest right now, part of it I would just put into the S&P 500. I just put into SPY to maybe utilize that money later on. Also, it's always fun having that so you can see that uh, against the other things that you have. Uh, yeah, I, interesting. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that idea of just, you know, being the market uh, until maybe you find something that, that you really, you really want to put more money in. Uh, okay, so what's uh, stock number two, I guess? So I've been reading that healthcare usually does really well during a recession. And so I really like the index fund, the XLV. Mm -hmm. So I started to invest into that. And I like that because I'm not well versed in every single aspect of uh, all the businesses in the healthcare industry. So it's kind of nice that it's in a basket and then you can devote your attention towards maybe some other stocks that you might have more knowledge about or might feel more passionate about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I love that idea. And actually that's, that's Peter Lynch's a uh, big, big investment advice, right? Invest in what you know, right? So if you, uh, if you don't have that deep, uh, deep uh, experience in one industry or one sector, then, then just, you know, buy the sector with maybe that XLV. If you don't have that experience in pharmaceuticals or, or drug research or biotech or things like that, uh, and then invest, you know, specifically individually in, in stocks you do know about. Excellent. So the XLV, the SPY, uh, stock number three. Raytheon. It's one of my favorites. Um, I love that it has a, a def it's a defense contractor. It also um, has commercial money as well that it gets in. Um, the price to earnings is a little bit higher, but I mean, it's just a very steady stock. Um, I own it and uh, I just, I really like owning it. I really think that with how things are going in the world, it is a really smart play. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely one of those kind of counter cyclical uh, uh, trades where you know we're going to be spending on defense, uh, defense spending, whether whether the economy falls or, or not. Okay, stock number four, I guess. Dutch Brothers. Dutch, so, Dutch Brothers, the coffee. Yes. Right? Okay. So this this one out of uh, the ones I've had so far is a little bit more adventurous. Uh, I really like Dutch Brothers. Uh, it's local to Oregon. Uh, they're so friendly every time they go by. They have an awesome story. Uh, they support ALL or ALS research, which is a cause that's close to my heart. Um, 
also just looking at some of their growth numbers. And one thing that really hurt them last time was the commodity prices for uh, coffee and milk, and that's come down. So maybe not this quarter, but I'm wondering if next quarter the profit margin is going to really increase if commodity prices keep going down. Uh, fifth stock. Fifth stock. So I haven't had anything in internet technology so far. So I wasn't sure whether to go with Salesforce or Palantir. So I thought Palantir. Uh, just because uh, the when you have an index fund, you're investing in more larger Mm -hmm. companies and I wanted to maybe pick something that was a little bit smaller um, just like Raytheon they have government money they have also um, corporations they have a really good runway to go uh, there's their price to sales has gotten a little bit higher it's about 12 um, but I did buy back when it was down around seven and it's starting to to go up and I've been watching it for a really long time so some some great funds, uh, some great stocks there. I, I like how you have uh, some funds and some individual stocks, uh, some a little bit more value plays and, and some growth plays. So so you're really, really well diversified across there, no matter what the economy does. Uh, and, and I do have a, a little bit of a confession, I, I guess. Uh, you know, it's just not not just a, a call to, to get your perspective on it. I'm actually going to invest $1,000 in those five picks on a, uh, you know, on a portfolio on stock card going to do that for all five uh, community members that I'm talking to. And at the end of the year, the person with the highest return in their five picks is going to keep their money. Uh, so a thousand dollars, what would, uh, what would you do with it? It could be more than a thousand. If you're, if those stock picks do well, then it could be, you know, twelve, fifteen hundred dollars What would you, uh, what would you do with that? I would reinvest it. So now given that, that, that you are really trying to go for a high return, the highest return possible, is there anything you would change about your portfolio or, or uh, I imagine probably in about three, three months, then we'll touch base again and see if you want to change any of them. So maybe you want to allocate that, that SPY money into another individual stock. Uh, but I love how you're, you know, you're, you're going to uh, capture the market returns with that and then, you know, give yourself some, some flexibility, but is there anything you, you'd like to change with it? No, I think also part of investing is knowing yourself and knowing what it is that works for you. And you can, you know, YOLO and all that stuff and get all the, the different one, the different stocks that are. Um, but for me, I know that this is what I really, I think you call it the core satellite strategy where you have like uh, most of it's like in an index fund and it's been working out for me pretty well so far. So Excellent. Yep. Love it. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to invest that money into a, into a portfolio and we'll touch base again in three months to see if you want to change anything up and, and we'll see how it goes. Thanks, Melanie. That's so exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I love that idea of holding some money back in that index fund, the SPY, while you wait for individual stocks to, to just show you something to buy. It allows you to be the market, get that market return while you find something you really want to invest in. It's a well thought out portfolio with that core satellite strategy that we've talked about on the channel and should do really well. Paul is a 41 year old highway worker that actually had his birthday the day we had this call. So I appreciate him taking the time to help us out. He's been investing just before the crash in 2020 and is always great about commenting and sharing his ideas. Hey, Paul, good to see you, man. Thanks for joining us. And I hear on your birthday, no less. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, ha happy birthday yep. there. Uh, thanks for helping us. Uh, you know, just 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 a fun little uh, video on some of the some of the long term members of the uh, the citizens of the Bowtie Nation trying to get your ideas on you know what stocks are you watching? Or where do you see the rest of the market going for the rest of the year? So uh, you know, if if you had a a thousand dollars, for example, to to invest in five stocks, where would you start there? Yep. Okay. So if I had a thousand dollars today, um, I probably dollar cost average into some of my stocks and um, the ones I really kind of have. Um, Know, believe in a little bit. I don't know. I, I want to pad my Alibaba stock. I been kind of dollar cast averaging down on that. I liked it at 300 and I started buying at 200. So now I'm looking at 2030 and that's kind of like one of my, you know, five to 10 year plan. That's more long term. You know, there's going to be a lot of volatility, I think, in China. But yeah, if yeah. The piece, I think it's going to be good long term. It's the Amazon, you know, and Amazon's been falling too. So it is, you know, I, I mean, Alibaba, it's a great company. And what I like about it, especially right now, is that, you know, China's really just at a different point in their economy than, uh, than the rest of the world, right? Yeah. China's actually stimulating their economy. They're lowering rates. So it should help, 
should help their stocks while you know all of the ones in the U.S. and the Europe and Europe are falling. So so I like it. It's kind of a balance too. Good good one. So what's uh how about stock number two? Uh, stock number two is not even really a stock. It's more of a core based strategy plan, like you said. Like uh, I wanted to get my uh, I think it's MGK. It's the mega stocks. Okay. Um, or whatever, one of those core ones or whatever. I was thinking about doing that since a lot of these, you know, a lot of the, the big techs have been kind of dropping, and I think those are going to be good long term. So I wanted to have that too because uh, I do like to have like a majority of my money in like kind of more safe indexes. Mm -hmm. And when I first started, I had like 50 stocks, and I'm trying to narrow that down to like 20, I believe, in now. So I've been kind of thin in the herd. Um, so I want to get that that base kind of back too. It's kind of it's kind of like a do you know what I'm talking about, Joseph? Yeah, the the Van, I think it's the Vanguard Mega Cap Growth stock, Growth Fund. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, yep. And, and great, you know, great idea. I, I really like it, that it's exposed to those growth stocks. So you know, if the market does rebound or when it does rebound, then then you've got those growth stocks ready to take off. But but as a fund, it's it's you know spread across a bunch of those. So you don't you're not having to pick the one winner to uh, to do that. So so yeah, really good. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't think that one might. I don't think that one's going to take off too. Uh, crazy this year but um sure i think you know if i could just keep add a couple of shares here and there you know throughout the year i think that's going to be a good anchor yeah definitely um yep yep and, and then uh, my third play my third third fourth kind of plays i'm looking at is um mary jane stocks or whatever i'm looking at true leaf and avant or whatever true leaf is like uh i don't know i think they're getting to be one of the most competitive ones out there um yeah, so I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at Avant. Avant's more international. I don't—they don't even sell in the U.S. right now, so not a lot of people are looking at them. But okay. it's like a penny stock that's at like twenty cents right now. Is it? It was oh. at like seventy. Okay, so I liked it at seventy. Uh, Avant, you're talking about Avant brands, right? A V T B F. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. A V A N T. Something like that. Yeah, I have to go on um, E Trade to get that one mm -hmm. since it's you know OTC. But sure. yeah. Kind of might have the dollar cost average into that are looking good now are Corsair and Honest. You know, those are looking pretty decent too. I think they're good. Okay, of of the two there, which one do you think you would go with, Corsair or the Honest Company? Ooh. I don't know. But if I had to choose one, probably Honest. I think just Honest? because it's so low right now, it's like at like three dollars. Oh wow. Okay. So okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, I like, I like how you got some good growth, uh, growth exposure there, some cannabis exposure, uh, small cap, a lot of small cap exposure there. Um, awesome. And you know, I, I might have kind of a, uh, kind of a, a little birthday present for you here. Um, uh, this isn't just to, to get your ideas for, uh, you know, for stocks you, you like, this is actually, I'm going to take uh, take a thousand dollars and I'm going to invest it in those five stocks. Um, I'm going to do that with five portfolios on stock card. And uh, the person with the highest return at the end of the year uh, gets to keep their money. So, hey. uh, so it could be thousand, fifteen hundred, awesome. okay, whatever, okay. whatever those stocks do. What would you yeah. do with another thousand dollars? Invest it. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? That's that. Yeah. That is what everybody yeah. has yeah, said so far. Doing, I don't know. We'll see. We'll Excellent. See. Yeah. Until I find something I want. Yeah. Now, yeah. so so that said, now that you, you know it's a you know this is a real portfolio and uh, you're you're competing for for top return uh, portfolio over the rest of the year. Uh, I'm going to give you a chance to change one of those if you want to. Now, if you if you want to stick with those five stocks, then uh, then you know I'll put in no, the order. I, yeah, since we're doing individual stocks, yeah, I'll just change my mega cap to uh, Corsair instead. Okay. Okay. If that's the cool. Or actually, 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 might change that to uh, TTC. TTCF or whatever. Okay, Tattoo Chef. That one's Chef. like at, yeah, that one's at like, no, no, Corsair, Corsair. 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 Okay. <laughs> I don't know about, I don't know about veggie food yet. No, 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 see, you're going <laughs> to, you're going to kick yourself if Tattoo Chef takes off and Corsair doesn't, <laughs> but. Yeah, I know, I know. But no. What do you do? I think they can yeah. look back at it, right? Yep. So, okay, <laughs> I love it. You know, you got a lot of, I got a lot of real growth stuff there. Uh, small cap names. If, you know, if, uh, I think. Basically, out of the five portfolios, really, if, if the market uh, rebounds, if it takes back off, then, then I, I think you probably got the best chance with that kind of riskier stock portfolio. So uh, we'll see how it does. I'll probably check in. We'll check in in about three months to see if you want to change up any of your stocks at that point, And then we'll see how it goes for the rest of the year. All right. Sounds great. All right. Thanks, thanks for uh, seeing me, man. Yep. This is a strong growth portfolio that will definitely be in the running if the market rebounds and rewards those growth names.
I like the balance Alibaba brings to it as well, and I'm excited to see this one. Next is Hank, an army officer that also runs the blog Money Q&A since 2010, so make sure you check that out for some great personal finance and money advice. Hank, great to see you again. Thanks for joining us here. Uh, thanks for helping out, really getting us, giving us an idea of you know what to invest in, where the markets, where do you think the markets are going in 2022? Man, well, thanks for having me, Joseph. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where the markets are going in 2022. I, just like everybody else, it's uh, interesting times we're we're currently living in. But you know, if if you did have a a thousand dollars to invest in five stocks uh, for the rest of the year for for the highest return, uh, what do you think that they would be? What stocks are you watching? Yeah, What's the this, first one. <laughs> kind of tough for me because you know I'm a I'm a big index fan you know index fund kind of guy and you know and then uh, you know thanks to you and some others you know I'm you know doing the, with the, the I bonds and things like that I'm always looking for a good rates of return I, but I do like to to dabble in the individual stocks not as much as I think the you know a lot of your your uh, YouTube subscribers but I'm 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 a big dividend fan so I'm looking constantly at the the blue chips and okay. the blue chips paying the dividends. Um, the, I, I actually like the downturn in the market. You know, it's a great buying opportunity. There are so many uh, stocks that are on sale, quote unquote, on sale. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm looking at uh, things. I've been a longtime uh, Coca-Cola fan and longtime owner of Coca-Cola. Um, so I think, you know, stocks like Coca-Cola, um, I, I, I don't understand how big blue chip names like that can be down it's like the, the what the tide rises all boats and the tide lowers all boats so I, I think a lot of companies are getting just beat up because it's the economy right and then uh, inflation inflation of course is real uh, concern but I, I think um, coca-cola is, is you know my tried and true that I, that I always kind of come back to and go to and along with like McDonald's you know I, I'm a big proponent of uh, you know what like warren buffett said uh, invest in what you know and, and so i always look around my kitchen and i'm always looking at what my kids are doing and playing with and and uh things along that those lines so you, you know i'm a huge fan of, of coke uh mcdonald's a amazon uh you know i know it's been beat up uh but i just those are some of my top three um in home depot i know home depot is not exactly the uh the most uh I don't know what the housing market lately is maybe not the most popular of choices, but I, I think um, we're going to see a, uh, you know, a resurgence and uh, stabilization in the home prices in, in America and, and more home buying. I, I hope for my sake, because I mean, the wife and I are looking to, to buy a home here in the next uh, year or two. Okay. That's my four, uh, I, I think. And, and then I kind of have one that you, you maybe are definitely not going to like. Um, I, I like the swing trade. I don't know if you, you know, do some swing trading or whatnot. And I am all the time buying in and out. And, and I'm, you know, fair disclosure, uh, you know, current stockholder in uh, Peloton. Okay. And, you know, very not not a popular choice. And, and I tell you what, I love the product. My wife and I have a bike. We're always looking around. Uh, we're, you know, eventually we're going to buy a tread. They just announced they're going to have a, a rower um, finally. Um, it's a horribly run company. I hate it. I, I love the products, but I hate the company. I'm glad they, you know, uh, Foley, the the founder who was CEO, got got the boot and left. Um, but I, I think just, the company just continues to make stumbling blocks strategically, and so mm -hmm. I, I hate their strategic vision personally. But I, I think it's it'll be better. It'll 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 come around in the next you know one or two three years or get bought out. That's uh, sure. great buyout, especially with the price where it is now. I love the idea that, yeah, a lot of these these companies, these big blue chip companies, these uh, these companies that are are such a part of our life, like Coca Cola, like McDonald's, you know, they have sold off so much over the past uh, you know, six months, and yet they're the, still the same companies. You know, the stocks have fallen, but they're still the same great companies, uh, great long term investments, and yeah, you're getting a great discount right now. So, Coke and McDonald's uh, have done nothing different since the pan you know relatively since like the pandemic ended you know we're talking about high inflation you know mm -hmm. whatever it's tried and true um so i mean it it is a, a case of the the tide lowered the boats in in most respects so i and i'm also a huge fan of dollar cost averaging you know oh, i'm sure. dollar cost averaging into these stocks every month 
And so when it's when the when it's low like this, love it. I'm buying tons of shares. Awesome. Uh, well, great portfolio. And actually, you know, it's not just uh, not just trying to uh, gauge your your ideas here and, and uh, get your ideas, but I'm actually going to invest a thousand dollars in those five stocks on a uh, on a portfolio and stock card. Uh, I'm doing that with five other or four other people, so five portfolios. The highest return portfolio at the end of the year, that person keeps their portfolio. They get the uh, they get the cash uh, from that portfolio. So uh, that's more research than that. <laughs> I there <know>. you go. <laughs> uh, so so how, what would you do with uh, the extra thousand? Or, or hell, if, if if Peloton doubles there, it might be fifteen hundred, might be twelve hundred. Yeah, plow it back in. Put that's, it back in. Yep. <laughs> that's that's you know at these prices, who who doesn't uh, want to yeah. reinvest it and get more of that? Uh, so you know that said, you know th knowing that you are. Uh, you are going for the highest return out of a por out of five portfolios. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to change one of the picks if you want to. You can stay with those. Uh, so far, everyone else has stayed with their original five picks. But uh, if you want to change one of those, then uh, then go ahead and uh, which one would it be? No, no, no? I'm, I'm pick with them. All yeah. right. All right. Well, we'll uh, safety is in a swing for the fence. Yep. Well, we'll set that up. Uh, I'm going to check back with you in probably about three months to see if see if you want to change up any of those. And uh, and we'll see how it does for the rest of the year. Sounds great, Joseph. Thanks, Hank. Hank's got a strong blue chip portfolio here. The kind of stocks that will grow your money for decades and hold up in a crash. I like his thinking on Peloton, a strong product that just needs a better management team to guide it. Check out the 2022 portfolio on StockCard or click on the video to the right for the five monthly dividend stocks that beat the QYLD, five stocks to put cash in your pocket every single month. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.